Every ALMA observation contains a series of calibration observations which can take up a significant fraction of the time spent observing the sky. In this video, we'll learn about the fundamentals of ALMA interferometry calibration, why calibration data are needed, and how they are used to calibrate ALMA data. ALMA total power calibration is different from that required for interferometry and will not be covered in this video. The goal of observational astronomy is to capture electromagnetic or gravitational radiation from sources in space in order to understand the universe around us. Radio interferometers like ALMA measure complex visibilities, in other words, the amplitude and phase of the cross-correlated electromagnetic signals between pairs of antennas, as a function of time and frequency. In practice, these visibilities are measured as voltages in the receivers of each antenna, which are then collected by a powerful computer called the correlator, which cross-correlates the signals and converts them into visibilities with arbitrary units. As a signal travels from an astronomical source to the correlator, the signal passes through the Earth's atmosphere, through the antenna optics, and finally into the receiver, where it is detected and converted to a voltage. Each of these steps modifies and distorts the incoming radiation in different ways before it reaches the receiver. These distortions can vary as a function of time and frequency, and even from antenna to antenna. Calibration is the process of correcting for these distortions, so that we can convert the output from our detectors into physical units that we use to do science. In that sense, this is no different from the calibration we need to do when observing at optical or other wavelengths. Fortunately, each modification affects the outcome multiplicatively, and hence it's possible to treat each one independently. Let's follow a signal as it travels through the atmosphere into our telescopes and detectors, see how the signal is distorted during its travels, and learn how we calibrate for these effects. There are several sources of noise to consider. The atmosphere itself introduces noise to any transiting signal, which we call the sky temperature, or T-sky. Further noise is also introduced to the signal in the receiver, which is described by the receiver temperature, TRx. The sum total of these noise sources and any others is called the system temperature, or TSIS. We measure the system temperature by periodically comparing the signal from blank sky, that is, a position with no known signal close to the science target, with a signal of known temperature. The system temperature is measured every 10 to 20 minutes at lower frequencies with ALMA, and every few minutes at higher frequencies. In addition, the atmosphere can introduce phase offsets and amplitude variations, often called gain fluctuations, into the signal due to a variety of short-term and long-term processes. Depending on the frequency at which you are observing, processes in different atmospheric layers can affect the data differently. Variations can be caused by everything from ice structures in the upper atmosphere to entire clouds slowly drifting over the observatory to small-scale jitter in the water density among individual clouds on timescales of seconds. It is not always possible to distinguish the individual underlying causes of these fluctuations, and thus we approach calibration with the goal of correcting for the total effect on the phase as the signal passes through the atmosphere on both short and long timescales. One of the causes of these fluctuations is atmospheric water vapor, which introduces delays in the signal reaching the telescope and can cause very rapid fluctuations over timescales of seconds especially at millimeter and submillimeter wavelengths. Water vapor radiometers are installed on all antennas on the ALMA 12-meter array to monitor these variations every 1.1 seconds. Corrections derived from these measurements are routinely applied to the data during ALMA pipeline processing. Other distortions of both the phase and amplitude of the incoming signals can vary over time scales of minutes, and are monitored using periodic observations of a moderately bright, very compact source within a few degrees of the science target. 
the best sources are unresolved at the angular scales probed by the array. We choose a point source because if the source has no angular size, any phase shift or amplitude variation imparted to the signal must be from the net atmospheric distortion. The cadence at which the phase calibrator will be observed will depend on the stability of the atmosphere, on the frequency or wavelength of the observation, and on the maximum baseline length. Atmospheric phase varies more rapidly at longer baselines, so the phase calibrator is observed much more frequently. For ALMA in long baseline configurations, the phase calibrator is observed every 90 seconds, but only every 5 to 10 minutes at smaller baseline configurations. In certain circumstances, phase and amplitude calibrations can be derived for even smaller timescales than those on which the phase calibrator is observed. If there is a relatively bright and reasonably compact source in the field with the science target, it may be possible to correct for phase and amplitude variations using the source itself on timescales as short as a few seconds. This process is called self-calibration. Self-calibration must be applied carefully, but if done correctly can result in a significant improvement to your data. After the signal has passed through the atmosphere and enters the telescope receiver, it is converted into a voltage. Flux calibration is used to convert that signal into units such as Janskys or Kelvin, and requires the observation of sources of known flux density and angular extent. For ALMA, bright solar system objects such as planets, moons, or asteroids, which are unresolved or only partially resolved for the required array configuration and which have accurate models, are used as flux standards. Of course, a suitable solar system object is not always available when the observations are being carried out. ALMA maintains a catalog of bright quasars, which are scattered across the sky and are used for flux calibration for most observations. Quasars are variable and can change in brightness over timescales of days to weeks. So, these secondary calibrators are monitored regularly for variability by the observatory at least once every two weeks, and their flux densities are calibrated using solar system objects. Finally, we need to correct for the difference in the relative sensitivities as a function of frequency across the band pass using bandpass calibration. Similar to flux calibration, bandpass calibration requires observations of bright sources with no spectral lines using the same tuning setup as the science target. This is used to correct for frequency-dependent variations in amplitude and phase. If the flux calibrator is bright enough, it can also be used as a bandpass calibrator. We've just looked at the fundamentals of calibration for ALMA interferometry data. Every ALMA array observation consists of a flux calibrator and a bandpass calibrator, plus a phase calibrator observed periodically interspersed with the science targets. Some specialized observations like polarimetry projects require extra calibration. The ALMA data reduction pipeline, using the overall principles outlined in this video, automatically uses these calibration data to derive and then apply the corrections needed to properly calibrate your science data.